I'm Father Frank DeCiano, and I'm here with a little short video message on our divided society and what we as believers can do about it. You know, it's become commonplace to say how divided we are as a people, and we summarize divisions into labels like left and right, blue and red, but divisions are far more than the labels we have. Divisions also extend to the closeness or the distance we feel with other people. And often we are most divided from people we should feel closest to. Perhaps the scriptures could give us some way out of these divisions, but the sorry truth is we bring our own divisions into the very scriptures that we're reading, often using God's word to justify our opinions. Indeed, it is possible to use the scriptures to justify our prejudices. And historically, we have used the scriptures to justify systems that we now see as clearly evil, such as slavery or racism or sexism. And social media has complicated our social divisions because unchecked and false material can be easily circulated precisely to stir up hatred or divisions. Indeed, every week, experts in intelligence are telling us that foreign powers are using social media to stir up segments of our society against other segments. But even apart from social media, we segregate ourselves by our supposed value system, even to the extent of going to churches that confirm what we already think. It's gotten so bad that commentators have to offer us advice about what we should or should not say at gatherings like Thanksgiving or Christmas when arguments are likely to surface among our family members. This divisiveness can seem buried into the very structures of modern life. We know historically we once had a massive civil war in the United States. But deep embedded feelings can continue to disrupt politics and our social conversation. So I have some questions for us to use for self-examination. Uh, to what extent do I spread division and even enjoy making others feel uncomfortable about what they believe? To what extent do I use social media to further images and ideas that I know are going to cause conflict and increase divisiveness? When do I recognize that the opinions I have might well be cloaks for other feelings and prejudices that I have? I mouth words in place of recognizing just how parochial my concerns can be. Here's some questions on a more positive note. When do I acknowledge that, as humans, we all have the same basic needs and mostly share the same values? When do I make the unity of people a sincere and fervent goal of my prayer? And when do I make time to socialize with people who may seem very different from me in terms of their values? Despite contemporary cynicism, there are things like truth and right and wrong and deeply held commitments. But along with these, there are forces that have a lot to gain from increasingly dividing us, whether it's politically, racially, religiously, or socially. I can so easily be used by organizations or parties, by people with imbalanced agendas, or by one-issue groups, and this can happen without my even recognizing it. So here's a little test we might develop. Before we do or say something, we can ask ourselves where these words come from in our own souls, whether they come from anger, or some kind of other dubious feeling? What will we say to further the development of solutions? Or are we simply there to compound the stalemates that we feel? Will our ideas, my idea, lead to most people winning? Or is it just a victory for my side, my opinion, my group? Will my idea lead to the hurting of other people? Will most people be better off because of what I said or did? 
Now, in no way am I suggesting that we should not stand for something, especially in the life and death issues which speak to the value of our very human existence. But in every way, I am suggesting that we can go about espousing our ideas and commitments in a much more respectful way, with the humility to hear what others might have to say. As Jesus said, who are we to take the splinters from each other's eyes while we are unable to see the logs that are in our own eyes? And we remember the words of St. Paul to the Romans in chapter 12. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Have the same regard for one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil and be concerned for what is noble in the sight of all. So democracy is a great experiment, but in its modern form, it's just a little more than 200 years old. And it's obvious that democracy can be threatened from without, but even more from within. How religious belief intersects with democracy may not always be clear, but democracy certainly needs values. As delicate as we know democracy in our public conversation can be, perhaps we can be more reverent in how we express what we believe. A God of universal love certainly wants humans united, respecting and loving each other. And what better measure for our thoughts and words than this, love and respect for each other. God bless you and thank you.